they under, they understand. Sean, yeah, yeah, sure. Sean Edwards, generic. First off, just want to say congratulations and Thank just you. explain to the people because a lot of people out there don't really understand what it means to be a fully independent filmmaker. Yeah, um, I mean, being fully independent is uh, it's more than just saying I'm independent. <laughs> Uh, it means that you actually have to wear all the hats. Um, so you have to go find your own money. Uh, most times you either write your own script or find your own screenplay that you could actually capture or buy. Uh, and it also means putting your movie together, making it, casting, cinematographer, actors, <laughs> you know, talent, whatever, everything that you have to do to make a movie, you have to go do it on your own. Uh, and there is no luxury of a studio that has relationships. There's no luxury of being able to go to that top actor and saying, hey, I want you for my movie. Uh, it is all from the ground up. And uh, it's an extraordinary uh, process. And it's a process that, that, that uh, tends to break a lot of people. A lot of movies are started and not finished. Uh, a lot of movies are ideas on someone's shelf um, so to be able to actually say, I'm going to do this and then actually do it uh, and get to the end is, is far more victorious than getting the movie to the theater, if you ask me. What advice would you give to an inspiring filmmaker who wanted to jump into this business? Um, advice I would give to a filmmaker uh, trying to get into the industry, passion. Um, nothing, nothing, there's nothing there's no one, there's no agent, there's no manager, there's no financier, there's nothing uh, that will give you uh, more greater success than having passion. Um, it's priceless because it is how you're gonna make your movie, it's how you're gonna cast your film. Ultimately, when you turn the cameras on, it's what is gonna shine through the artist to represent you. Um, it's a big deal, man. It's a, it's a word that's easily thrown around. Um, but passion is when you're 18 hours into a movie, it's you know 10 degrees outside, the crew is ready to go home, and you need one more shot. Now, you're self-taught. Yeah. What was the day when you said, I can do this, I can become a filmmaker, and what ignited that? Uh, I was in East Germany playing basketball, um, and uh, it was freezing cold, and I remember watching, like, one of the many movies I've been watching forever, uh, which was Platoon. <laughs> and um, I just was like, man, I, could, I think I got an idea to write a movie and I wanted to do it. And uh, at the time, you know, I think I'm like the, the most prominent person for this, which is I knew nobody in the entertainment industry. I knew no actors. I knew no one who wrote, directed, produced, uh, I flew home for the off season, and I remember I was just like, I'm finna, I wrote this movie, I'm finna go out here and do it. And uh, I remember people laughing me out of rooms. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? The pitch was great, but then I had no other element. I had no script, I had no idea. I just was like there, man. I was just living in the moment, and you know, now that I look back, I'm like, damn, dude, how stupid. Like, but it was that stupidity, it was that, it was that passion, it was that hunger, it was that fearlessness of me not knowing that I shouldn't be doing that that allowed me to do it, uh, if that makes sense. Why the movie Traffic? What motivated you to write and then turn what you've written into a movie? Uh, my daughter. My daughter is the, was the driving force uh, behind Traffic. Uh, I wrote the movie strictly off the fact that I started getting uh, information in the area about young kids being abducted and trafficked in my area and you know just as an african-american man I first of all trafficking that was foreign to me I'm like okay that ain't us <laughs> we cool you know what I mean and then I started learning very quickly like no that is you and this is the world and domestically this is a very very big problem it's such a big problem that uh, there are you know thousands of abductions a day into trafficking and uh, that just triggered me, man. Where I had to start, I started writing and trying to figure out how to build a movie that could live in a thriller world, but at the same time give you uh, a story about how this happens. As a black male, what is your responsibility as a filmmaker? Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, you know, as a black male, uh, as a man, I think to be the best me uh, that I could possibly be. 
uh, what I like that I'm doing and what I'm trying to be responsible uh, with as a director is to tell stories that are relevant to me and stories that actually can move uh, and ignite change. Um, obviously, we do a lot of stuff with color. Um, you know, I made a film called Supremacy that dealt directly with white supremacists and black family. Um, this movie is out of the box based on the fact that a lot of people don't understand trafficking is uh, uh, not only is a broad problem, but it affects 62% of African American women. So me being able to put a hat on and do this was, was actually pretty cool. All right, you primarily shot the film outside of Sacramento and Northern mm -hmm. California. What was it like shooting there and why did you decide on those locations and how easy or hard was it to find where you shot? Because the movie looks amazing yeah. and the locations play a big part of, the, of yeah. the overall story. Yes, so Sacramento was chosen because I lived there and I was shocked to find out that that is a hub for trafficking. Um, but it also was great because the, the you know Sacramento, Northern California is you know it's just engulfed by trees and vista and you know winding all the way up to Tahoe, coming out of the Bay Area, coming into Sacramento. It's just a beautiful stretch. Uh, so the locations became a character for us. Um, and then what also became beautiful for us was the vistas. So getting up to the house and being able to shoot uh, in these amazing properties where it's just wild and open and you know, and then what happens when it turns dark, those same incredible openness becomes very scary and you now understand how vulnerable you are. And uh, I thought that was an amazing twist in the movie that was able to condense and ratchet the heat and the, the, the terror uh, as the movie turns dark. Now traffic is the focus now, but what's next for you? Um, what's next for me is uh, I have a film uh, which I'm really excited about called Motivated Seller. Uh, with Michael Ely, Dennis Quaid, and Megan Good uh, that's coming out later this year. And uh, we're starting production on a movie called 38, uh, which I think is a very important movie, uh, a movie that is shot in South Central L.A. Uh, that actually takes the audience on the other side of the blue line, which is with all the Black Lives Matter going on and police officers killing young kids, we are not going to go and examine what does it feel like to be a black cop. Uh, in the streets over the course of this time. And uh, I think I'm some really excited about it. Dante Spinotti shooting the movie, and uh, we're excited about that for real. All right. We're done, man. That's Thank you.